Hi, sewing friends, and welcome to another episode of Sewing Online with Saki. Tonight's presentation is called Let's Get Organized and So Much More. On behalf of Saki of America, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Michelle Umloff. We have a special guest for this evening. You've probably seen some of our email messages circling around about our guest. And this, inf this webinar is going to be filled with a lot of information. Um, if you have a pen or handy, go ahead and grab that because you'll probably want to jot down some notes during the webinar. But this is being recorded and we're providing you with a PDF of this presentation after the webinar. I wanted to go over a few um, bits of information that is very important to you. First of all, where can you access all of this information? It's going to be available on our website, and in fact, you're going to receive an email message on Friday about this time with links to all of this information so you don't have to necessarily write it down. But to let you know, if you go to the Saki website, www.saki.com, and look under the Education and Events tab, if you scroll down in that section, you'll find Sewing Online with Saki. Click on that and you'll go into our webinar section of the website and you'll even see the first webinar that we uh, recorded back in May. So you'll select the let's, let's Get Organized and So Much More and you'll find all of this information. It's going to take us a couple days to get all of this up and ready for you, but we've been updating it periodically as the information becomes available. So the webinar recording will be there, the PDF for this presentation. Just a special note about the instructions for the project. That is only available to those people who registered for the webinar. So if you registered and you didn't attend, you're still going to get a, a link to the instructions and that is going to be provided in the email. We're not going to put those instructions on the website. You'll find a link for our special sales page as well as a link to the free Saki Embroidery Club Spoolies Embroidery Design um, that we're giving you for attending this webinar. We're even going to do the questions and answers a little differently this time, and the questions and answers are going to be provided in a PDF. Last time we, in, we emailed everyone individually, but this time we thought we'd house all those things together uh, with the webinar um, on the website. If you have any type of technical problems, the best way to get help is to contact Citrix Technical Support Team at 855-352-9002. Their team is equipped with the expertise and knowledge to be able to resolve your problems and get you into our webinar as fast as they can possibly do that. Now, you might experience some technical issues such as the screens might not change as quickly as I change them on my end, and that's kind of normal. A delay is normal. In addition, you might experience some sound problems, and then you can always uh, switch over to your telephone and call in. You'll um, push the button that says telephone, and then you'll be able to dial the number that shows up and type in the um, special access code that you will receive. Well, we have a lot of information to cover in this webinar, and I'm going to begin with some time-saving measuring and cutting techniques. We're going to show you some recipes for stabilizing quilters cotton fabric. We'll show you how to do raw edge in a different way, and we're going to show you how to do hoopless embroidery technique. I'm going to show you how to master your built-in decorative stitches, and we're going to finish up with a faux binding pocket that is part of our stabilizer organizer. 
So the first step in every project, if you like it or not, is cutting your fabric. And I'm one of those people who used to be really intimidated at looking at yards and yards of fabric. Now, I didn't come up with this technique, but I observed some people doing it years ago. And at that time, I wasn't ready to really figure out what they were doing because laying my fabric out across the mat was really working for me. But my husband gave me a new cutting mat one year for Christmas, and I didn't have the heart to tell him that on one end of the cutting mat, the numbers and lines were nice and clear, but as you go across the cutting mat, they got really smudged and very hard to read. So you can imagine trying to line your ruler up on something like that. So I felt like I was kind of forced into this technique where I like to use my rulers. This is simple. You probably have a lot of these already in your resource center. You need a cutting mat and you can actually turn your cutting mat over to the other side if it doesn't have lines on that side and that might help you from getting a little confused. I prefer to use a 6 by 24 inch ruler because that's nice and long, it's wide, uh, so I can put my hand on the rulers. And then you just need a few other extra rulers and your rotary cutter. Now let's just take a look at our the information that's contained within a square inch. Those lines that you see and those dots that uh, are connected by the lines represent quarter inch marks in either direction. And then you, there's all the, all the hash marks on, on the outer perimeter of the square inch and they are actually broken down into one eighth inch. I wanted to let you know that not all measuring tools are the same. So if you measure out a square inch on your tape measure, it might not be the same as a square inch on your uh, cutting mat or even on your ruler. So it's the, the key is to be consistent with your tools that you use for cutting. First of all we have to designate a straight point on our fabric and since I didn't have to wash this fabric to make the project I just assumed that the fabric fold was straight and I lined my ruler up on that fold and you can see this in the picture down here at the bottom. I have these two dots and this hash mark. They're all lined up with the fold of the fabric and that tells me that my ruler is straight. Now looking up here at the larger picture you can see that my ruler is straight but the fabric is not and I'm just going to make a nice cut along the edge of this ruler and I'll know that both my um, both edges are straight. And the reason that I select um, these dots for lining up the ruler is because I can see them really nicely right here. That's the only reason that I use it as a guide. So now that you know how to straighten up your fabric and all the different points on your ruler, we need to start measuring and making some cuts. So we're going to use a two inch uh, strip of fabric just to start with. And as you can see, I have my ruler uh, set up with two inches of fabric underneath of it. And you can see that right here. You can see how my ruler is nice and straight along these lines. And I'm going to cut just right there and make a nice two inch strip. Now, if your ruler happens to be wider, scratch that. If your cut needs to be wider than six inches or the width of the ruler that you're using, you need to do just a little bit of math. So in this sample, I had to make a 10 inch cut. So my ruler is six inches wide, plus I've used four inches from a second ruler, and I'm just going to cut as usual. Actually, my ruler should be down to the edge at least, uh, so I can make a nice accurate cut. If you need even more space, um, or more of a ruler to cut your fabric, you're just simply going to rotate your your ruler or you're going to get another one. And the best, the only thing that you really need to make sure is that your fabric is straight along the measuring edge of your ruler. 
Once you've made all the strips that you need to cut, then you just simply rotate your fabric. I have my fold over here and my selvage edge was over here. I know that these, this area of my fabric is nice and straight and I'm going to proceed by cutting from or measuring from the raw edge, putting the amount of fabric that I want underneath the ruler. I find this really easy. I prefer doing it uh, this way rather than laying out the fabric across my cutting mat. I hope that you will give this a try. It might not work for you the first or second time, but with some practice, I think you'll gain confidence in trying to cut your fabric using this technique. So Patty, are you there? Patty has put herself on mute and sometimes we have a little bit of a delay. Patty? I, I I heard you. I just didn't respond as quickly as I used to. You know how that is? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much anyway, for joining us. Thank you. I see you have something to tell us about Seasons with Salky. I am so excited about this course. We've done several online courses now, but this one is the Coup de Gras. This is a what we build it as was a continuing education course for our Selkie certified teachers, but it's really open to everybody for just to have fun or just to begin their career as a Selkie teacher uh, for no reason at all. Just come and join us. You'll have a great time. There are two versions of the garden gate wall hanging that you see there, and this project was one of the magnificent projects that Carol Ingram has designed for us over the years. Those of you who may have taken some of our certification courses know that she is an amazing artist, but she always manages it to dumb the project down so those of us who can't draw a triangle can do this. And she's done it again. This project looks like an enormous undertaking, but it's really not. And for the certification, you can do either the small one or the large one or both if you want, but you're only required to do the small one. And the same is true with our Seasons of Life calendar holder. It's a perpetual calendar holder that has all four seasons and there are two back to back, but you don't have to do it that way. You don't even have to make it a calendar holder. You can make those individual wall hangings if you want. There's just a gazillion applique techniques and some weaving and all kinds of fun three-dimensional things being done on those. They're a lot of fun to make and you're going to be sad when there's only four seasons. That particular project was designed by Evelyn Byler and again any of you who have ever taken um, or seen any of our samples in our booths know that Evelyn Byler is just an incredible seamstress and quilter. She does the most amazing things, and this project was developed by her. So we're very proud of both of those projects, and although the class really did start on the 13th, it's not a problem. You just join us. We're going to leave registration open until the end of the month so that you have plenty of time to jump in, and there's plenty of time. It's a six-week course. I really think you could get these projects, each of them done in a weekend without a problem at all. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention was the price is... <laughs> over the top. It is so so fair and such a great value. It's all only $99 for what you would really be getting is six classes if you were teaching. So, And then with your $25 discount with the code that you see on the screen, it's $74. I mean, that's like $10 a class. It's just astounding. Anyway, and besides all that, it's really fun. So think about joining us. Um, Ellen Osten is teaching both of these, and we will both be on the course all the time to help you. So join us, won't you? All right. Thanks, Patty. This looks like a lot of fun, and I can't wait to take the class and start making some of these projects. They're really, really cute. To teach that class. And then the calendar is a perpetual calendar holder that you just insert your calendar into and it has the four different seasons. They could also be wall hangings if you preferred and you didn't want to insert a calendar, that's just fine too. Um, and those are four different seasons which could be four different classes. So you've got a total of six classes that you can teach and all of that is $99. And Ellen is one of the instructors Oh, actually, she is the main instructor for these, and we all know how much fun Ellen is. So I think that if you have the opportunity and you can fit it into your schedule, you should absolutely make 
yourself available to this great deal. You're going to get $25 off with the early registration code. We're still going to honor that for you. And we'd love to have you with us. And even if you just want to do it for fun, we would love to have you join us. It is fun. We have a great time. I think it's something that you could easily get done. Even if you started two weeks from now, you could easily get it done. I think a full day for each project would be more than ample for you to get it done. And the big thing with Sulky online classes is you get to download and keep the videos forever. So it's not just the six weeks that we're offering the course, you get everything and you get to keep it. So I hope you'll join us because Ellen and I are really excited about this. It's going to be a great time and we've got a really full class, so it'll be great. There'll be a lot of social activity and you'll have fun. So join us if you can. We'd love it. Thanks, Patty. Well, this looks fun, and I can't wait to start looking at these videos and learning how to do these projects. All right, so we've told you about this stabilizer organizer, and I want to introduce you to this project by just covering the few things um, that are the, the basic elements to making this project. We have the background, which you can see is the polka dotted fabric that I have, and that you can either make hang tabs, as you can see, or you can make a casing for this so that you can hang it either by um, a, something that goes over a door or even something that represents or very similar to um, a, a curtain type hanger. The very top piece is not a label is not a pocket we refer to that as a label so that's just an applique piece on the top and then the pockets with the faux binding that is what we're going to emphasize on showing you how to do uh, during the webinar because we are giving you the free download to everybody who's registered for the webinar how to make this project step by step and you can download those instructions and be able to make this project easily on your own. Now I would like to introduce to you our guest for this evening, Sue Hausman. Sue is joining us from California and I'm in Maryland so we are literally across the country. We called Sue just a couple days ago and asked her if she could sit in for us um, in Joyce Drexler's absence due to some unfortunate, or not unfortunate, unforeseen circumstances, Joyce could not join us this evening and she apologizes for having to cancel at the last minute. But when Sue heard that we had a need for her, she was very happy to join us and she is just a perfect fit for this project because she presented this on the television show that's on a PBS channel, So It All. Sue is retired, believe it or not, and she is a freelance sewing educator that just loves to help out Salky. She loves working with us here. So Sue, I see that you have unmuted yourself. Go ahead and say hello, and I'm going to move us on to the next screen when you're ready. Well, I have. Good evening, everybody. It's great to be with you. And I must share, it actually was yesterday, I think, that I was contacted. And I said, well, sure, I'd love to be involved. And I usually come to these webinars anyway because I want to see what's new and what's happening with Sulky. Um, I'm excited about this project. Actually, I don't know if you know, Michelle, originally I did write the directions for this project. And what I did was showed it on that TV show, but I made several of them, and I have one hanging in my sewing room, although I have up to three or four rolls of Sulky Stabilizer in each one of my pockets, so it is a very handy tool, and it hangs very easily on the back of a door, or you can put up, as Michelle said, a curtain rod for it, so I'm excited to, to be involved tonight, and uh, if people have questions, I hope I can answer them and we can put them in the PDF. And I'm on my way to the American Sewing Guild Convention in San Diego, or co the annual conference, which is in San Diego starting on Thursday. But I made a little stop here, and I've been running sewing camp with the grand girls. So that's been great fun. Uh, but what we're doing first with this is to stabilize the background or the piece that the whole 
the whole pocket system is built on. And Michelle, this stabilizer organizer is perfect for your cutting techniques because it's all rectangles. Basically, you just cut out these rectangles for the pockets, you cut out the rectangles for the back, the rectangles for the little loops, and that's it. That's all the cutting there is. And But I knew that I wanted it to be stable so that it would hang well, like a picture, so to speak, or a shade, but I didn't want it to have batting in it. I didn't want it, it didn't need to be a puffy thing on the wall to hold my stabilizer. So Fuse and Stitch, Sulky Fuse and Stitch was the perfect answer to actually use it in the back piece. The, you think of it as a quilt, except the batting is Fuse and Stitch, and that is the piece that holds the whole system where the pockets are attached to it, and what you're going to love about Fuse and Stitch, if you've never used it, is that it is a permanent stabilizer. You see the purple. The purple color means permanent for Sulky, but it's a heavy weight permanent. I don't know if you've ever made shades. I have. I don't know if you... One of my friends just said she, she came to Zen. She learned about Fuse and Stitch. She makes name tags for everybody in the quilt guild. She said Fuse and Stitch is fabulous for name tags. She does embroiders. So anything you want to be nice and stable that you would think, I'm going to do a picture on the wall of embroidery. Fuse and stitch is what you need. Now, to apply it is really quite simple because it is a fusible sulky stabilizer. It is 100% polyester. So I want to point out to you with all of your fusible stabilizers, keep in mind that some folks think, golly, I've got to have my iron really hot to put this down. That's going to make it stick on really well. Wrong answer. If your iron is too hot, you will bubble and distort some of the, most of the fusible stabilizers because they are synthetic fi fiber. In other words, fuse stitch is 100% polyester. So you wouldn't use a linen setting on a polyester dress. So think about it in that way. It's lots of steam and the highest setting that it will receive. My tip is cut a little piece off get a scrap of your fabric and just experiment with it a little bit. Lots of steam and 10 to, 10 to 12 seconds in one place and then move your iron and then move your iron and then move your iron. And in other words, don't iron back and forth because that's not going to put it on. Now I know a lot of folks don't have irons. I have one of those steam generators, which is fabulous for this. But if you don't have an iron that steams well, then wet a piece of cloth, like a piece of muslin, or I use the dish towels that we dye glasses and things with. I get it nice and wet, lay it on top, put that fuse and stitch uh, on. But the other thing that'll help is if you iron the fabric you're going to put it onto first, then lay it in place and kind of baste it across the piece with a few up and down motions. But by heating up the fabric first, it also tends to bond better. And of course, you want to then use lots of steam. Once you've got the up the back of the fuse stitch on from the wrong side, flip it over and press it from the right side. And again, if you don't have good steam, I would use a wet press cloth there too. But you will be amazed how uh, stable, I don't know the other word, stiff, this will make your fabric. And it will support well, as I said, I've got four times five. I've got 20 rolls of stabilizer, and mine's holding up that with my fuse and stitch as my stabilizer. Whoops, sorry. Now you're gonna oh you're gonna talk about stabilizing quilts or cotton. You want me to do that now too? Yeah, sure. Please. Well, in, okay. So the pockets of this stabilizer holder are made with mine were muslin actually, and then backed with a cute little print. Uh, it was a batik print, but st quilters cotton really is not a particularly stable fabric. And usually people wash it so it's even less stable because any of the sizing is out of it. And so I felt that it, particularly the muslin needed to be a little more stable to create a pocket for my stabilizers. And Soft and Sure Extra was just perfect for that. And I'm going to share with you honestly that when I first used Soft and Sure Extra many years ago, I was unhappy because it was bubbling, and then I realized my iron was too hot. So if you keep your, now this is a nylon, 100% nylon. It's a textured nylon, so it doesn't sliz around like nylon, you know, if you think of nylon-y fabric, but the fiber is nylon. So you want to be sure to not have your iron set, I say, higher than a synthetic setting. Um, you can use a silk 
You can even go a little bit higher than that, but it all depends on the iron. They're all different. So again, practice on a scrap first, up and down motion, lots of steam. You're going to be thrilled with how this stabilizes your cottons, your muslins. When I'm going to embroider, I will use my soft and sheer extra or regular soft and sheer. And my one little tip is if your fabric is translucent, if you see through it at all, if it's a lightweight silk that you can kind of see through, then I would use soft and sheer, which does not have the extra fusible. It's simply the nylon. Lightest weight, soft and sheer, lightest weight, cuttable, 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 cutaway on the market today. And so it actually is one ounce per square yard. So very lightweight. So use one of those. In this case, I wanted it a little more stable. And that fuser, fusible adds a little more st stability. But same rules. And of course, here you're stabilizing your piece. Do you want to talk about this, Michelle? Sure. Well, as you can see by this list, that, and Sue did a wonderful job of covering a lot of different uses for the soft and sheer extra. But one of my favorite uses for soft and sheer extra, and it was so helpful for this project, was to use it to prevent show through. And what we mean by that is my background fabric was polka dotted, and you can see that's coming through and showing through the top fabric that I have here. It's visible. So I just added a layer or two of soft and sheer extra to the back of my mini panel here, and voila, it was absolutely invisible, couldn't even see it. So that I think that is a really handy use for the um, soft and sheer extra when you're doing any type of applique project. I like how my little lady got a sunburn here. <laughs> I love the this line. It's by Lorelei Designs, and this is the So Fabulous collection. There is a lady for every body. Um, so for my mini panel, I applied a piece of fusible web to the wrong side of the lady, and you just apply that with a warm iron. And then I trimmed it using a rotary cutter um, that has a decorative edge blade. That might be a tool that you have in your sewing room that you might not have thought of to use for doing raw edge applique. And I really like just the fun, trendy little look that it gives to the, the edges of applique pieces if you just didn't want a straight squared edge. Also, um, after you apply the applique with your warm iron, you need to sew it in place. And I went around the edge very closely to the cuts and I used an invisible bread thread for this purpose. You could also use decorative threads and we have so many beautiful threads that you could use to do so many different decorative stitches that you can truly make a project like this one of a kind. Our polyester invisible thread is available in both clear and black and yes it does make a difference if you use the clear thread on a black fabric you will be able to see it and vice versa. Patty, I'm going to ask you to take yourself off mute again and talk to us about the artistry and applique. I've had an opportunity to take a sneak peek at this um, class and it is really intriguing. Patty, are you there? Hello, Patty. I see that you're off mute. I am. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Okay. This artistry and applique class was our first venture into just fun classes without certification, and, and it has been very well received. We're just finishing up the first course. It ends in a few days, and everybody has had such a great time. The projects are so varied and so out there. I mean, they're just different than what you've probably ever done in the way of applique. The center pillow that Eric Drexler designed is done with free motion Zentangles. I know those white squares look 
like they're a print, but they are actually stitched with a free motion stitch. Now don't let that scare you because those little flowers are done the same way and that's the applique portion of it and you can just do the flowers if you want. But he is such a good teacher and it's so much fun to learn from him. I think you'll really enjoy it. Kelly Nagel taught us topsy-turvy applique. Um, doing reverse applique with a twist. It was really fun to do and I'm so motivated to drag out some of those theme fabrics in my closet that I've been saving and I didn't want to cut them up. They're just too pretty. So this is a way to use your beautiful flowers or your birds or whatever you collect, your cats. You can make them show through and become much more dimensional that way. Also, um, Kelly's also teaching the square dance applique. Uh, which is a really fun technique in the fabrics you choose make all the difference in the world. One of the girls in the class this time, uh, Rita, she took the square dance applique and made it into a wall hanging, but she chose patriotic colors and did the square dance in one corner and then next to it she took one of the patriotic spoolies and embroidered it and then in the opposite corner up there she put another patriotic spoolie and then in the opposite corner another square dance design it turned out so cute it was so creative and there is a picture on our class of that and we will bring that over for the next offering which will be September 21st when it starts again and again with this course too you get to download everything keep everything including the videos so if you don't get it done in six weeks it just doesn't matter you've got all that to, to look at for the rest of your life if you want and I'll be around for the rest of my life and so will Ellen and Kelly, <laughs> everybody involved in this. So we'll be here to help you no matter what. And it's really fun. So I hope you think about joining us for that. And again, we're offering you an early registration code. Uh, as soon as the course is open for registration, you can use that code and sign up for the September uh, issue uh, course if you want to. And if you think you know applique and, or you tried it and it's just not for you, um, I think you'll find that these techniques and these classes are going to make it fun. It's not going to be work. It isn't just a satin stitch. Oh, Lord, how I hated doing that satin stitch. It was like somebody put a gun in my head and I had to do it because I never could do it right. But Ellen also shows you how to do that if you want to. But today we've got decorative stitches. We've got all kinds of invisible ways to applique. There's just so much more to applique than there was then. And we can even do them with very elegant fabrics, like the Silk Dupioni pillow. That is so pretty. Rita, the girl in, in the course this time, she's made five of those. Five of those. Oh, she should be canonized. <laughs> and um, those of you who think, well, I don't have time, really. These projects don't take that much time. And because you always have the videos and the course material, you can do them anytime you want. And they make great quick gifts. Well, maybe not the silk pillow. That's probably not real quick, but the other projects are pretty fast. And Ellen teaches the woven table runner, Ellen Osten. She makes that fun. She teaches you how to miter your borders. I thought I would never do that in a million years and she's won me over. So there's just so many techniques in this course. I think you'd love it. I think you'd have fun and we'd love to see you there if you want to join us. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Patty. All right, I know some people have probably been asking about where can I buy these products? What are your specials tonight? So let me go over this a little bit with you. We have a special for your entire purchase on the Salky Embroidery Club. And you can see the special code for that. It's S-U-L for Salky, W-E-B for webinar, and 35 to represent the 35% off. I know these are a lot of codes, and they're also available on the website when you navigate uh, to our webinar section. So that's the Salky Embroidery Club. Aside from that, we have um, on our, the, the shopping section of the Salky website. We have a tiered promotional code for you depending on how much you purchase. So if your purchase has a minimum of 25 
um, dollars, you get five dollars off of that. Uh, a minimum purchase of fifty dollars will take you up to fifteen dollars off, and then any purchase of a hundred dollars or more, you get to take thirty-five dollars off of that. So please jot down all of these codes and I will show them several times throughout the webinar so that you can jot them down. All of these codes expire next Tuesday, the 21st, at 3 o'clock a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And, um, I mean, that's a fantastic offer. I mean, not only is this a lot off of your order, but we have this promotion going for an entire week. And I wanted to let you know that the 35 is particularly important to us because Joyce Drexler has been with or been in the industry for over 35 years. So that's why we decided to make that code 35 as a tribute to Joyce. All right. There we go. Whoops. So also, you receive a link for the spoolie number five design. I think she is absolutely adorable. She should have a name other than number five. Uh, this is a free download from the Salky Embroidery Club that we're going to give you a link to. Just want to let you know that this does require at least a five by seven hoop to stitch her out. And um, I really like that because these are sizable and that uh, sizable meaning that they're a nice size that you can actually see them. They're not too small and they just stitch out beautifully. I just really, really love them. And Sue, I'm going to bring you up next to talk about the Spoolie collection. But Patty shared with me um, that she wanted me to ask you how you actually met Joyce and Fred. And she said you were really instrumental in helping them uh, get the, the, the rayon thread. Um, well, I, I met Joyce and Fred originally when I was with the Husqvarna Viking Company in the very early days when we were doing pictograms. And people may not remember that, but in my opinion, pictograms were the first real uh, home machine embroidery where you where you actually, with the feed system, combined shapes and embroidered. And they required a special thread to do those beautiful... In those days, it's so hard to believe that there was really no decorative thread available to the home sewer or stabilizer. And so it's been a lot of years now, and I've had the opportunity to spend uh, a lot of time both in the industry with Joyce and Fred and also in personal life with Herb and I, we're good friends too, and spend time together. So how, that's how I met them very early in the game when they were bring, the decision was that they would be the people that would bring in the first sulky, beautiful, beautiful 40 weight rayon sulky thread and um, designed for home sewers who wanted to do decorative things. Now keep in mind, we're going back here now 30 years, 40 years. So there were not the decorative options. They did, people did not, there was not stabilizer available. It was, it's hard to believe today. But you know, you wanted me to talk about the spoolies and I'm seeing Irene's question, what is a spoolie? I mean, the spoolies are little designs that originally um, Joyce came up with the concept of the spoolie design when I was preparing a, a program for Sew It All and that's where we did the stabilizer organizer with the spoolies on it and there's a kit for that. But this this was my favorite one because it says so, and I call it Suso's because that's my, my car license. But you notice it says sulky on the top, sulky and the, on the bottom, and you're going to learn about how to do those letters really easily so you can read them. But Joyce, I said, how about if we did some kind of caricatures of some kind? And I am not an artist by any means. And Joyce came up with this concept of the sulky spool caricatured into a person who loves to sew in this case or has a little baby with buttons in her ba baby basket and of course it has people love them I have a friend who did her valance for her sewing room with all the sulky spoolies on her valance I have them on lots of clothing because I love to sew but they are just cute as a button they as you said Michelle they're digitized 
really quality by the best digitizer that we know and they stitch out beautifully so there's holiday spoolies now and there's special spoolies in fact we even had a special zen spoolie so we'll be telling you lots more about those I think in a, on the Sockley Embroidery Club, there are at least two dozen different types of spoolies. There's um, a spoolie for different holidays and, like you said, for zen and different types of activities. So they're they're just really, really cute. Thanks, Sue. You're welcome. Wouldn't you love to have pin cushions for feet? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do sometimes. <laughs> Well, we are at that halfway point approximately with the number of slides that I have, and we're going to do a door prize drawing. This time we are giving away a Salky Couture pleather <laughs> toolkit, um, and this has some of the five most used tools or notions um, in your sewing room, plus we're giving out one of the free um, real thread charts and these are hand wound with the rayon thread and they are packed with a lot of information um, in there and you'll find it very uh, useful for thread and stabilizers so Patty you're back up and I'm going to ask you to uh, do the prices right and come up with a um, random name of our lucky winner for this door prize Okie dokie. I feel like Vanna, but if I only looked like Vanna, life would be so much better. But I'm going to roll the dice here, ladies, for you, and everybody's in the drawing, and uh, where the lucky wheel stops is who wins this. Oh, it's so exciting. I want it to stop on my name. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, that real thread chart is priceless. It is the best thing in my sewing room. I use it constantly. If I don't have the right thread, and I know you're saying, yeah, right, you don't have the right thread. But sometimes I don't have the right color. I can easily pick out the closest color to it and know it's going to work just great. Okay, the winner, Jean Heller, H-E-L-L-E-R. Jean, if you're out there, please say hello. I won. This is me. And what I would like for you to do is to send us an email at ask, A -S -K, Salky, at Salky.com and provide us with your email address. Well, we'll have your email address, but your physical mailing address and your telephone number. And Patty, can you please write her name down? Has she, has she, uh, reached out to us to say, I am here. Hello, it's me. She might not. She did. Oh, I see her right there. Hey, well, congratulations, Jean. And Patty, while we're here, have you seen any types of questions coming up or comments or something like that that you want to bring to our attention and address at this point? There have been a couple of cute little questions, and a couple of them have been about the spoolies, which Sue answered very well and covered all of that. Of course, there's a few technical things that people are asking about and about the specials, and we'll talk more about the discounts and that sort of thing. Um, also, uh, what was the other one I wanted to do? Oh, about color fastness of rayon. I know that's a question that's asked a lot. And rayon, our rayon is 100% color fast, but you do have to take some care with it in that you don't want to use anything that has bleach in it because, you know, like many of our garments, the colors will bleach out if we use bleach on them. If they're not bleachable, like a polyester blouse, you can bleach a polyester blouse, but you can't bleach a cotton blouse because the color is going to come out. So yes, our rayon threads are completely color fast. You just need to watch that you don't use any bleaching products with them. But I am notoriously careless with my embroidered clothing and I'm ashamed of that, but I'm admitting it to you. And I'm in a 12-step program for it, but nonetheless, I'm working on it. 
but I do throw my embroidered clothing in with all my other stuff. I use whatever detergent I have, and I've never had a problem in 20 years of embroidered clothing. And I still wear some of them. I'm also ashamed of that. That's part of the program. So anyway, um, I think that you can be totally confident, ladies, using rayon for your embroideries. It's soft. It's lustrous. The only time I ever use a, a polyester for my embroideries is when I know it's going to be bleached. Like my husband has some work shirts, and I put logos on them. And that's going to be bleached. I know it's going to be bleached, so I do use polyester then. But otherwise, I use rayon exclusively. So that was a couple that a couple people asked that question. And oh, is there a spoolie that you can use as a tag for your sewing scissors? Well, that's a great idea. You could really use any of them um, if you back them with fuse and stitch and um, and you had the courage to punch a hole in one, we certainly could do that. But we're doing some really cool tags in our Embroidery Zen program that we'll talk about later in the program, too. So there's a lot of possibilities. And don't forget, we're going to get all these questions answered for you, ultimately, if we don't get them done tonight. So don't despair. And don't be afraid to ask the questions, because they'll get an answered later in the week. Yes, they will. Thanks, Patty. All right. You're welcome. So let's continue moving along. Um, at this point, we're going to tell you how, um, briefly about how to do the embroidery, and we're working towards the hoopless embroidery technique. I'm going to assume that you have an, if you have an embroidery machine, you know how to download the design and transfer it to your machine. If you don't, don't be intimidated by your embroidery machine. There's a lot of resources out there to help you. Not only can your dealer help you, your, you have your manual, and then there's an abundance of resources on the internet. And how about YouTube also? The most important thing we strongly recommend is that you print out the color sequence sheet and use it as a guide. I mean, that is just so vital. Uh, we have two versions of it, and both of these can be viewed before you purchase a design. So you might want to check to make sure about the size of the design. You might want to know how many colors are in a particular design, etc. And these items are chocked full of information, and I'm just going to go over that a little bit with you. Right here we're looking at Sue Sews, and this is just one of two pages, but as you can see it has the name, it has uh, the designer, the size, and the number of stitches that it takes to sew out this design. And it's interesting because Kelly Nagel reminded me to share with you one of our smaller spools of thread. I, I have a large embroidery machine and and I think just threading my machine would use up a spool of thread but a small spool of thread will stitch out 44,000 average size uh, stitches and we have information about that on the website that you can go look at and it's under rayon thread but 44,000 stitches so you could practically uh, sew a little over two of these and still have some thread left over when you if you ever buy an embroidery uh, collection of thread you'll find which threads you use and they're the ones that you would want to get larger uh, spools of thread but back to this color sequence chart you can see that it tells you the number and that indicates uh, the color change, that one through six on the side. This might have about 18 different colors approximately. So that tells you color number one, what it shows you the uh, like a little chip of the color, and as well as that's the th uh, thread code number 1032. What's really handy about this is that it tells you what part of the design it's going to stitch out. And it also indicates that it uses sulky rayon thread and the weight of thread that's being used. There are some instances where you will want to change the weight of the thread and it's indicated in this color sequence chart. So it's really, really important. As long as your machine says, hey, I have the same amount of uh, color changes as your color sequence chart has, everything is good to go. I unmuted myself, Michelle, just to address one thing, and that is when you download these designs, unclick the color sort. 
in your software if you're bringing them down to your USB stick or your disk or whatever to bring it to the or just directly to the machine don't color sort these designs because sometimes they get combined and then your color sequence chart won't match what you're doing there's a reason that a color might be repeated later uh, and not combined so the other thing remember that when they when you download these are coming in all different formats and you're going to choose your format and it may not have nice colors when it gets from industry digitizing to your format but don't worry about it because you're simply going to follow your color sequence chart and that's what we recommend thanks Sue. good points and you know while you're unmuted why don't you go ahead and talk to us about the rayon thread because I know people want to hear from you Oh, well, you know, obviously I, I'm just a rayon thread groupie. I, I have used Sulky Embroidery Thread 40 weight since the first day of doing any embroidery, and I do love it. Uh, I use the small spools for a lot of my embroideries because I like to change the colors often. I follow the pictures and everything, but I also buy the, the king spool when I'm buying my colors that I use a great deal, like black and when I'm using my white. But 40 rayon is what most designs are digitized for. So keep that in mind. And uh, we recommend a 1280 embroidery or top stitch needle. I will tell you on the project we're doing today, because we're going through an extra layer of fusible. Remember, we stiffened up our pocket. If we embroider that and we've got a fusible soft and uh, sheer on the back, then we go to a 1490. So either one of those will work great. And then, of course, the new bobbins. And many of you that know me from years back, I have never been much of a fan of pre-wound bobbins, but I will tell you I've been using the sulky pre-wound bobbins virtually exclusively unless I want it matching because of some kind of a color that I'd like to see on both sides. And then I use polylite, which is that 60 over 2 light lightweight polyester thread that's new pretty new to sulky so but the polyester pre ones are working great oh and there's the poly light good yeah and this just works great keep going sue <laughs> well you know i have to share you were talking about um whether rayon is color fast and i have never had any problem with sulky rayon thread running and i'm not particularly careful and i do a lot of kids stuff too for grandkids and all but I'm also extremely excited that the cotton, the 30 weight sulky solid colors of cotton are not only color fast, but they're bleachable. So you can put them on a white towel. And I just did a bunch of towels for my daughter-in-law with numbers on them. And you can go to the website and find that project. But I used polylight in the bobbin to match and used the cotton on the top and it was fabulous. So the reason we have the polylight shown here is that in Miss Booley here, when you do little lettering, the minute I saw polylite, I went, oh my gosh, I know that quilters will love this, but I can see this for lettering because when you use heavier thread, remember 60 is less than 40 and it's going to be much finer. It doesn't build up and get gloppy when you're doing small lettering and not just small lettering. I use polylite for almost all my lettering. By the way, I love the question here. I want to be sure we, it says, is there a fee for joining the embroidery club? Absolutely not. Go to that embroidery club and get in there and look at some of the cool stuff. Thanks, Sue. Well, I want to get the, mach the machine embroiderers back in and tell them how we're going to do this uh, hoopless embroidery technique. Just to uh, get you back focused to our project, remember that we put one layer of the soft and sheer extra and we applied that to the wrong side of our front pocket piece. And you've already heard the instructions of how to do that. The key to doing embroidery is to mark your center point. Like I mentioned, the instructions are very detailed and it walks you through um, where to exactly put these lines so that you can position them on your hoop. And I'll show that to you in just a second. For the hoopless embroidery, we're using KK2000 to apply two pieces of Tear Easy Stabilizer together. KK2000 is a wonderful temporary spray adhesive. It is eco-friendly. It has a um, specifically uh, specialized um, engineered 
nozzle so that where you spray, it is going to apply the adhesive. And one thing I like about it is that it is heavier than air. So all the KK2000 is going to sink down. It's not going to make this huge puffy cloud of spray adhesive in your um, wherever it is that you're sewing. And I'd like to remind you, we still don't recommend that you sew near your sewing machine. Please go into another room or spray in a box away from your sewing machine. And I learned the hard way um, that you don't want to use your guest bathtub as a spray box. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so once you have your two layers uh, put together, you're going to hoop them into your um, embroidery hoops. Nothing to worry about here yet as far as lining everything up. Then you have your fabric that has your um, positioning guides and that's what you're going to line up along your, the notches that are built into your, um, your uh, embroidery hoops. <clears throat> and there's two ways to do this. One, you could do it the way that I do it or you could do it the right way. I prefer just to go ahead and spray the, the um, Tear Easy Stabilizer directly into my hoop. I'm kind of like one of those fanatics that cleans all that stuff up anyway, uh, so I don't you know, get lots of buildup on my hoops. I, I clean them frequently, but you could uh, spray the backside of the fabric and apply that um, into or position it into your embroidery hoop for your hoopless embroidery. So you see we're not hooping the embroidery, we're putting it right on or we're not hooping the fabric, we're putting it right on top and using the KK2000 to assist us. I just wanted to point out if you've not familiar with machine embroidery or um, wasn't sure about what I meant as far as the notches go, I lined up my hoop along these big lines on my cutting mat and they go right over to the notches that I was referring to and Matt, Patty mentioned about the embroidery zen program that we have you're going to learn all kinds of techniques about this and um, it's just a really fun program and we'll talk to you that, about that in a second so you're just going to continue your machine embroidery like you normally do you're going to insert the hoop your, to your machine. What we do recommend is that you first stitch out a basting stitch to secure your fabric to the stabilizer. Now if you don't have a basting stitch that's quite alright, you're going to want to uh, do both methods that I've mentioned previously, Michelle's way and the right way. So you're going to apply the KK2000 to the stabilizer and to the back of the fabric and that will create a stronger bond. Go ahead and stitch out the design and it's just fun to watch them. I've been embroidering for years and I still love to sit and watch my machine stitch these designs out. Once the design has finished, you're going to remove the hoop from the machine. And at this point, it's easier to take out the basting stitches with your uh, seam ripper. Go ahead and remove the fabric from the hoop. And you always want to press your embroidery designs from the wrong side. Now it's time to remove the two layers of Tear Easy. And we recommend that you remove them in opposite directions. So you can tear it from left to right and then from top to bottom. And it really is easy for it to tear away. You'll have a little bit left, you know, like in some of the little smaller areas. You don't even have to worry about getting um, those little bits bits and pieces out. Michelle. Yes. You told me to interrupt you at 10 o'clock and tell you about the last door prize. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that was perfect timing because you're going to be up now too. We don't have too much further to go, but I am very mindful of people's time. It's important, you know, some of us have to go to bed and go to work in the morning, or some of us are, you know, have dinner to make, depending on where you are in the world. So, Patty, if you can spin that wheel for me, and I am going to minimize my screen a little bit while you're doing this part, and I'm going to provide the handouts at this point. Okay. 
I landed on, with my magic wheel, Anita Priest. That's P-R-I-E-S-T. Anita, are you with us tonight? You were. Are you paying attention? <laughs> anyway, Anita, we will need the same thing that we needed from Jean earlier. We want you to send us your um, mailing address and we would like your phone number so we can get in touch with you to give you your prize. Congratulations. Thanks, Patty. So if you can go ahead and talk about the embroidery zen, that, that's perfect timing while I go ahead and do these um, handouts. Actually, Sue is going to join me uh, on this, and we're going to talk about this marvelous taping we just did. You, you, you people are going to love this program. Um, it is just, I think, the best thing we've ever done in terms of education. It, it's just so incredibly informative. Sue, would you like to tell them about all of the stuff we had for them in the program? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to begin by saying that it was you, Patty, and Ellen Ostin, and myself, and we were in Denver for a week, and we had Herb with us who handled all the machines for us and did a lot of help. And I can tell you that I've been... Well, I've had the privilege of going around the country and even up into Canada to teach sulky embroidery zen for about two, three years now. And of all the programs that I've ever taught hands-on, I can say that this is the one where the students come up to me at the end and say, oh my gosh, this was fabulous. I learned more in this class in the three days or two days than I have learned in four years since I've owned my machine. And I now really, feel, they always say to me, I feel confident doing embroidery. And that's really what Embroidery Zen has been all about. However, you've had to come to one at a local store or one that was run by Sulky and it always involved quite a bit of travel. Now, with the brand new Sulky Embroidery Zen online classes, you'll be able to take this class, but not even the same. It is even better than what we've been doing live because we had three minds together and we put together lots and lots of step-by-steps. So you'll be able to take these classes in the comfort of your own home, sitting at your own embroidery machine. That's the beauty of it, that you'll be learning on your own machine. And I noticed the question about, will, do we tell you in our instructions what Stokey stabilizers to use? Yes, yes, yes. That's truly, if I write instructions, it's going to tell you exactly what stabilizer to use and when. And that's a big part of this class, going into all the different stabilizers and doing actual projects using those. So we do about 20 projects and you actually receive 21 designs plus there are 16 bonus designs which are really cool and you're going to find out that you will learn about placement, positioning, how to combine designs and we talk about how to combine designs if you don't have a big hoop, if you do have a big hoop, if you have templates, we so there's a lot of different techniques color, covered. And plus we cover things like color sorting and jump stitches and just different things that you don't usually get in an average embroidery class. You'll see the picture of the market tote. That's probably the favorite project. It's like we call that an unhoopable and yet we do hoop it up and we put it on its side and we create a beautiful embroidery on it, the 3D butterfly you see. My suggestion is you go to the website because there's so much more information there. I've been making these t-shirt pockets like crazy and I love the lacy pocket. I have, I can't, I could go on all night, but I think you should take over here because I'm saying too much. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. But, but you know, you learn what thread to use and when to use it. We do a lot with blendables. You should see blendable embroidery. It's a fabulous. Wonderful. Yeah. Sue and I could go on all night about this. Um, what I do want to mention, though, is is there is a discount there for Zen 1 and Zen 2 and the combo. And Craft Univers Online University that is hosting the, these videos and this program, they have the Zen 1 and Zen 2 up there right now, and the combo will probably be up there tomorrow. So don't, don't get discouraged if that's what you want. It'll be there really quick. And there's a lot more information on our website on it as well. Thanks, ladies. So again, I know some of you uh, needed a little bit of time to write down these codes again. Just to remind you that we have a special code that will take 35% off your entire purchase from the Salky Embroidery Club. 
Plus, we have some specials uh, for our shopping portion of our website at Salky.com, and it's based on a tiered uh, program. All of these codes expire next Tuesday on the 21st at 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern Daylight Time. So don't worry, I'm going to have this slide up again. So while Sue and Patty were talking about uh, the Embroidery Zen, I uploaded a couple documents that I can virtually hand out, and that's pretty cool. Uh, one is the supply list, and the second one is the instructions for the project. Now, don't worry. If you don't know how to download or do anything with these uh, documents, then they will be given to you um, when our email goes out on Friday. But um, there should be like a little box um, that you can see it says handouts, and we have distributed two handouts. One is the stabilizer organizer, and the second one is the supply list. So pictured on this screen are um, the basic supplies you need to um, make this project. And if you're only doing the applique version of it, you need the fuse and stitch stabilizer and the soft and sheer extra. And probably a question that's coming up is like, well, how much of it do I need? And that is addressed in the supply list which happens to be page two of the instructions. And I'd like to sh share with you that we have a, a, an embroidery collection, a thread collection that includes the CD, which has all of the spoolies we showed you a little earlier. Plus the handy thing about this is that it has all of the rayon threads that you need to stitch out every single design. And that is really, really, really handy love that product. I had to get it to uh, do this, um, the sample for this, and it was just absolutely a dream to have, and I didn't have to go looking for all the other spools of thread in my collection. During the last webinar, I shared this chart with you to help you understand the various thread weights. This time, I just simply changed the caption of this chart, and this is going to help you understand how to master your machine's built-in decorative stitches. A lot of Salky's decorative threads are listed on this chart, and above them, it indicates which weight thread that they are. And there's also a line that's going to help you understand thread weight a little bit more. Now, Salky's rayon thread is a 40 weight thread, and that is the industry standard when it comes to digitizing embroidery designs, as well as programming decorative stitches for your sewing machine. Now, anytime you deviate from 40 weight thread, there's going to be some changes, and you'll notice that perhaps your stitches won't stitch out the way that they should have or is pretty. If your thread weight is a little lighter, such as 60 weight, the fill isn't going to be as nice. And if you increase to the 30 weight, it's going to be a little bit more dense, and you just simply have to make some changes to your machine setting in order to use those other types of thread. So for example, if you increase your um, thread weight to a 30 weight or a 12 weight, you need to lengthen your stitch length and also adjust your uh, stitch width by increasing it so that you can you need to accommodate these types of threads because they are not the industry standard weight. This chart also shows you as a general rule of thumb which size needle you would want to use when working with the various types of types of thread. And keep in mind, this is just a starting point. It really depends on the, the thickness of the fabric that you're using and also take into consideration how much stabilizer you might be using with that fabric. We touched on some of the nice features about the rayon thread, but one thing we haven't told you yet is that Salky's thread is ENCA certified, and that is really a, an incredible um, certification to have because the ENCA 
rayon fibers are some of the most finest rayon fibers in the world and we're really proud to have that certification and be able to provide you with really good quality thread. 40 weight rayon thread can be used in the bobbin as well and a question came in earlier uh, before we started the the uh, webinar and someone was asking about using um, what was the most appropriate thread to use for uh, baby clothing. You can use rayon thread but you really have to be cautious when you use brighteners. Any type of uh, laundry detergent that contains any type of bleaches that's really not recommended for rayon thread. If you need to use those type of agents then you want to consider using polyester thread. Let's get back to this pocket and we're going to put it together and show you how to do the faux, faux binding. Now the back piece of the, the pocket um, is two inches wider than the front piece and we've designed that on purpose so that we can create the faux binding. Now you can go ahead and pin both sides of the fabric with the right sides together and notice how there's the fabric in the center that's a little bunched up. Don't worry, it's supposed to be that way. And what you're going to do is take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to move that bulk away from the area in which you're sewing so you don't stitch over it and you're going to sew along the long edges of the pocket with a half inch seam allowance. Now you can use poly light thread in both the top and bobbin for constructing the pocket. Once you're finished, you're, this is going to be like a tube and you're going to turn it right side out. You don't want to trim the seam allowance because that's going to help you create the faux binding. The excess fabric is going to be um, on the edges and it's going to help fill up that little extra space along the side of the pocket. This is really a cool technique and I wish I would have known about it a long, long time ago. So don't worry about having a uh, faux binding on the ends of the pockets because those ends are going to be sewn to the background of the stabilizer organizer and they're going to be hidden and not be, be able to be seen. It's optional if you would like to stitch in the ditch and stitching in the ditch is a term that we use where you sew right along the seam where the two pieces of fabric meet. Now it's beneficial to use a foot that is either called a stitch in the ditch foot if you have it. I don't have a stitch in the ditch foot so I used another foot that I have. This is called a narrow edge foot and see how it has a little guide. You place that guide in the center between the two pieces of fabric so that you can stitch in the ditch. What type of thread you use um, when you stitch in a ditch really that is up to you. I decided to use the polyester clear invisible thread to do this technique, but it looks really great with metallic threads as well. If you're using a decorative type thread, you want to make sure that you uh, increase your stitch width um, from that 2.3 so that you can really appreciate the beauty of your decorative stitches or your decorative threads rather. So before you actually apply your decorative stitches to the edge of your faux bound pocket, you want to test them out on scrap fabric and you want to make sure your scratch, scrap fabric is a copy of what you're working on. You want to make sure that you have the two layers of fabric. You want to have the same amount and type of stabilizer that you also used to stabilize your fabric as well. And that's really helpful, um, especially if you have a machine where you can adjust the size of your decorative stitches. And it just gives you an opportunity to see how the fill is, what the size of the decorative stitches is. And you might decide to make them a little bit wider or a little bit narrower or more longer.
So as you can see, there are just a few elements of making this stabilizer organizer, and it's a really simple project. Again, you have the background piece that encases the either the hang tabs or the casing. You want to make sure that you read the directions carefully um, to apply the casing or the hang tabs to the background and that is pretty simple it's almost like constructing a basic pillow with just an added step the embroidered version of the organizer and that's the directions that you're going to have we'll talk about the label a little bit more in, de in detail and you can follow those easy step-by-step -step instructions to create the label for the applique version of it we just simply applique um, our lady to the very top of the background and of course you have the pockets with the faux binding that we just went over so we have gone all over all of these learning points during the webinar. We certainly create, um, covered a lot of material. I know we've run over time just a little bit, but I think you probably took home a lot of tips, a lot of ideas, and hopefully you were inspired to make one of these really cool stabilizer organizers. This is a picture of a flag that Rachel N. sent in. She made this um, using 12 weight cotton petite thread. And this is just a lovely hand stitched, cross stitched uh, American flag. And it is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure the picture doesn't even do the flag itself justice. And I really appreciate her sharing her project with us. According to the pattern there, it says that this pattern is by Bygone Stitches. And if you Google that, you can find more information and perhaps the pattern online. Just to recap, make sure you go to our webpage. You can either visit the links that we're going to send you in the email, or you can navigate to the webinar section of the website by going to the education and events section and looking for sewing online with Salky. In the next couple days, we're going to have a lot of these items posted on the website for you. I just want to clarify um, that the instructions are only available to those people who registered for the live webinar. If you're watching the webinar after the fact or watching this recording after the fact and did not register for that webinar, we have the project um, that is available for download with the instructions on the Salky Embroidery Club and we also have them available in the thread collection. So we'll have a special link to all of the pro products that were featured in this webinar. And um, you'll also receive a link for your uh, free design from the Salky Embroidery Club. And we're also going to provide the questions and answers in PDF format. So the email will go out Friday about 10 o'clock Eastern time. I have no control over that, but uh, you will have all of this information for the weekend. Just to recap on our special for the embroidery club, uh, for the embroidery club, using the code SULWEB35, you will receive 35% off of your entire purchase from the Salky Embroidery Club. In addition to that, we have a tiered uh, sale system for uh, the Salky website where you can purchase all any of the products uh, on our website and receive a discount from that. You get $5 off a $25 purchase or more. Once you reach $50, you take $15 off of that purchase. And when you're up to $100, you receive $35. You just have off. You just have to make sure that you write down the appropriate code and it's SUL5 for the $5 off. Then there's SUL15 for $15 off and SUL Web35 
for $35 off of a $100 or more purchase. Remember that all of these codes are good for a limited time and they expire on Tuesday, July 21st at 3 a.m. Eastern Time. We've already done our last door prize drawing and congratulations to the winner. Don't forget to check out the Embroidery Zen program that's coming up. The codes for this program is SOS775 and you can use that for Embroidery Zen 1 or 2. But if you'd like to take both classes, the code for that is SOS750. 7150. The, these programs are really great. You'll have a lot of fun and you will learn so much. You will really learn how to do all types of embroidery and how to use your machine and learn about hooping and stabilizing and you'll, you'll really have a great time. For everyone who registered for our webinar, we're automatically uh, adding you to our newsletter list so that you will receive updates not only about our webinar, about our classes, you'll find out about some fun projects that we have in store, and um, you'll be kept apprised of everything that's going on with Salky. We also have a Facebook page and a blog that Kelly maintains, so come follow us and um, we look forward to seeing you online. I'm going to leave this screen up for a little while so you can take the time to download um, your handouts that I provided. You can jot down these codes and that concludes our webinar for this evening. Now I have to be a little honest here. I had to re-record this last section of the webinar so um, when we did the live version, Sue said her goodbyes and as well as Patty. And we really appreciate bringing these um, webinars to you. We find them to be a lot of fun. We're overwhelmed with the amount of support that we get from you. And we just really um, appreciate it. So uh, keep following us and more good things are to come. The next webinar is going to be scheduled for September 8th. And it will be again be at nine o'clock a.m. nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So until then, so long. <laughs>